G'day guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and today we're talking all about commission painting. This is a subject that's actually near and dear to my heart because I often see a lot of, we'll call it shonky work out there, and the reason why is there's zero regulation in the commission painting industry. It's a backyard industry, something that the people participating in it have thought up, and anyone can call themselves a pro painter. Now, is it on them to provide a quality product? No, it's not. It's on you, the consumer, and who you pick to go with. Today, we're going to be looking at the, I call it the Pentad, and it's the Pentad of things that are related to commission painting, and that's the five things you're looking at on screen right now. They are, in no particular order, the miniature quantity, that's the amount of models involved, the quality of the final product that you want, the terms and conditions associated with it, the time frame for delivery, and the materials and consumables. Every one of these boils down to multiple minor parts, but they're the big ones that overall image makes up in order to come up with the cost, the dollar value to you, the consumer. So let's go into each of these one by one. As I said, they're in no particular order, so we'll start with materials and consumables, because that's the easy one for people. The commission painter is going to use a lot of materials and consumables. It might not occur to you, the person who's paying to get them painted, but just think about it. How many models do you think a, for example, single can of Citadel Chaos Black spray paint can cover? 50, 60 models, pretty nicely. Well, that right there, straight away, is going to be about a dollar a model just for the undercoat. So let alone any other conditions associated with it, straight away, there's a problem there for you. On top of that, you have things like the paint brushes, the airbrush. If they're using an airbrush on your miniatures, not only are you paying for the airbrush paint, but you need to pay for the thinners, the cleaning products for the airbrush. All of these things are going to play into the associated costs brushes themselves. Fine detail brushes wear out very quickly, even the good brands, because they're being put under a lot of stress, painting tiny details, and well, over time they get damaged. There's only so many times you can wash a brush and clean a brush, no matter how thorough you are, before paint starts getting into the base of the bristles and damaging the bristles. All the bristles get bent, maybe you drop the brush and it lands funny on the head, I've had that happen to me before. All associated costs. And what's worse is, it's one thing if an army is, say, Space Marines, and maybe they're Ultramarines, they're going to use a lot of Ultramarine Blue, that's great, you buy a paint pot and it's going to last you that whole army, um, or at least you're going to be using that same colour constantly throughout, but maybe they've got red eye lenses and nothing else is red in the army, you've still got to buy that red paint to paint them with, and you can't just treat it like don't worry, the next person can pick up the tab, maybe they're going to paint a Blood Angels army next. It doesn't work like that. All the expenses that are being charged have to come out straight away, because you've got to cover the work you're doing, not the work you may get. Going to the time frame now. The time frame is a huge deal. Everyone wants their stuff done yesterday. And at the end of the day, it takes a long time to paint miniatures to a decent standard. Now, it's one thing to be working with friends and saying, look, I'll paint your models for you, but I'll take my sweet ass time doing it. That's what I personally do if I'm working with friends. But a lot of commission artists, they're taking on multiple products and uh, multiple commissions at once. They might be a commission studio who has multiple people working for them, or they might be a lone artist. And if they're juggling multiple products at once, you're probably not going to be given pride of place. And it's important to remember this, and you need to find someone, and this ties into the terms and conditions, who's going to work within the constraints of what you want. You can't try and impose on them your will and change things after you've already set the wheels in motion and agreed to their terms. Of course, this takes us into the terms and conditions, because they're a huge deal. What's being specified? What are the costs going to be associated with this project? Are you paying for all the materials and consumables separately? Are they included in the base price of each miniature? The difference between the two could add up to a lot of money. On top of this, if you send them all your models, what's their condition on returning the models to you? Are you got some sort of are you going to have some sort of liability there? What if the artist decides, you know what? 
I'm going to hang on to the miniatures because I don't believe you pay me enough. Or, you know what, screw you, I can get more on the second-hand market. How you protected yourself. And vice versa. The person who is doing the work, they're going to want some sort of insurance up front for painting your models. It could be a half payment or a down payment. There's many things that go into the terms and conditions. And both parties involved, the person who wants their miniatures painted and the commission painter have to agree to the terms and conditions that they both want. Then we have the miniature quantity. Again, a big deal. You're going to get a different rate to someone else based on the quantity of the miniatures and the size of the miniatures. So if you want to have a snotling, for some reason, painted to a competition winning level say uh, crystal brush golden demon something like that although they are different levels of competition they are still competitions it's going to be very different to get that snotling paint to that level than it is to go out and get say smaug the dragon from the hobbit or a warlord titan painted to that level so you can't expect to be paying the same amount of money that's obviously an extreme example but it could be as something as simple as a space marine legion space marine and a space marine hq they're in identical armor just one of them's got a lot fancier armor but that fancier armor is going to carry with it additional paint time and you have to understand this that if you want everything to be to the same level different models are going to cost you different amounts and again we're going to hark back to the terms and conditions because it's probably the one of the big ones out there and when you look at those terms and you're saying, hey, I want this whole army painted to XYZ level, what are the levels that you're getting them painted to? And how are they going to prove to you that they're at that level and to your standards? Well, it plays into the quality of the final product. Bronze, silver, gold, whatever. The miniature that you produce, or that gets produced for you, is going to have a certain level of quality dictated. Now, if your miniatures are being supplied to the commission painter pre-assembled and they're not doing any assembly work, okay. But what's the condition of the assembly like? Because just like a bodybuilder, they need to eat the correct amount of fruit and vegetables each day, get that protein hit, hit the gym. Same sort of thing with models. The models need good stuff to create good stuff. In the case of a bodybuilder, it's a healthy lifestyle. In the case of miniatures, it's you can't have a miniature which has arms, weapons, model parts glued on incorrectly or huge amounts of glue overlapping the joints, heaps of mold flash left on there. The commission painter can only fix so much, especially if it's something that's been previously painted. And one of the terms and conditions that the painter may have is that they will not accept models that have been previously worked on. Some people do rescue work, some refuse to because it's just too risky for them. So these are things that are going to play into it. Of course, with that quality of the final product, like mentioned in the miniature quantity, so while you may have big miniatures in miniature quantity that are painted to a high standard, well, in the quality of the final product, you can't expect everything to be painted to the highest standard if you want to pay it the minimal amount of dollars. And that's what everything comes back to, how much you want to pay as a client. Because again, some people have very flexible systems. You go to one company and they might say, we have a level one, a level two, a level three, a level four, and a level five. Uh, level one is three color minimum, basic, basic tabletop. Level two is, you know, a presentable tabletop. Level three is pretty, pretty good miniatures. We do some custom basing with them. Level four is like display case standard, looks excellent. And level five is, you know, what we really recommend going to for the characters. So the characters look really flash. You know, companies exist and that might be their set of conditions on quality but other companies exist out there and the conditions are basically i paint all the models one way and take it or leave it there's nothing wrong with that because again this is an agreement you are making with them so if you're going to commission artist you have to decide is the product that they're making up to your standards and vice versa they might not want to take on your commission and that's their right as the business owner you can't force them into it. You can't force them into changing too many things. Once you agree to do things a certain way, you can't then turn it back on them and say, oh, I'm not happy with such and such. Because if they've done things to the standard that you agreed to at the start of the project, well, they've held up their end of the bargain. You can't go out and give them a bad review or such. So 
these are all things you have to keep in mind. When I talk about people who are frankly potato commission painters out there, and I, I don't care if it's mean to say, there are people out there who shouldn't be commission painters. But it's such a loose definition because it's my personal opinion on the matter. And it's because they don't fit my perception of this pentad. The problem is that you have people out there who cannot paint to anything above that basic level of tabletop miniature and they want to charge decent money for it. And this is because they're trying to earn a living doing it. There's a lot of people who think I love this hobby, whether it's painting Warhammer, whether it's painting historical miniatures, and they think how good would it be to do a job where I get paid to do a fun hobby for a living. And what they don't realize is that it's hard to pay the bills doing that because it's a very very niche hobby it's an expensive hobby and people don't want to fork out a heap of money in order to get painted miniatures and that's the problem it really is a matter of you get what you pay for there will always be horror stories where you turn around and someone says um i thought i was going to get much better quality than this i i signed up for more quality you know i've seen this person do better quality in the past but what i got was crap Okay, that happens. It's really bad luck when it does, and if they didn't hold up their end of the bargain, something's gone wrong. But vice versa, okay, it can go the other way. The person paints things to an exceptionally high quality, it goes to the customer, and the customer the whole way through has said looks great in all the pictures. They finally get the product, and they go, you know what, I don't like it. It really can sting. So, the point I'm trying to make here today is that there's a lot of things that go into it. But if you're unsure, think of it this way. If a person is going to spend eight or nine hours painting your miniatures for you, okay? What is minimum wage? So minimum wage is going to be what that commission artist is going to have to pay at least to themselves. On top of that, they're going to have to pay an income tax to their country. So they're going to have to pay, you know, possibly more than the minimum wage because they're operating a business. And business has its own liabilities and overheads, legal it could be insurance based, several things. On top of that, they've got their consumable costs. Keep adding that on. And if the amount you're willing to pay for your miniatures is less than that minimum hourly wage, then you're probably not going to be successful getting people to do the commission for you because it's not going to be worth their time. That's just how I look at it. Everyone's going to have differing thoughts. But a good rule of thumb would be whatever the miniature cost is probably what it's going to cost on top of that to get it painted. And if there's extra things involved, like assembly, for instance, of the miniatures, cleaning up the miniature ready to paint, you're going to have to expect extra, extra sort of again. Uh, if you want them to convert the miniature for you or do something special with it, extra again. If you pay $100 for a miniature, be prepared to spend at least another hundred on top of that getting that miniature painted. And that's only to a basic level. If you want to get it done to a good level, I'd be expecting two to three times that. So, I've been in this for a while, guys, in this hobby. 1993 was when I got my start. Nearly 30 years, another couple of years time, okay? I started as a really little kid. I get what it costs. I've done commissions for people. So this is just me trying to be a little bit informative with you here today. But what do you think? I've gone and spoken to other commission artists out there and seen what they've had to say. And what if what they say ties in exactly with the thoughts I've had here? But have you got any circumstances which I haven't taken into account today that you think are very applicable and might deserve to be added to this to turn from a pentad into perhaps a, a hexagram or a hexagon of some sort? Or a hexagamatron if you're a Dark Angels fan, I don't know. Is there another major point that deserves to be front and center? I don't really think there is. I think these five points really cover off on the big things that go into it. And each of them has a hundred minor points and they all overlap with one another in some capacity. But at the end of the day, the amount you're going to spend on the consumables themselves to paint the miniatures, the amount of miniatures and their size, the quality you want, the time you want it painted in, and the terms, okay? If the person says, hey, if you don't pay me the minute I say I'm done with the job, I sell your army on eBay, probably a risky sale right there, okay? 
all things to think about when it comes to getting an army commission painted. I'm Mac with the Outer Circle. Please, any thoughts, feedback, comments, additional questions you have for me, hit me up in the comments below. I'm sure there'll be plenty of commission artists out there who will be happy to come along, give you feedback from their perspective, get some interplay up. Also, guys, um, I had a lot of help from some commission artists during the filming of this episode, and I may go along later and do a video or two and just talk about the different commission artists I spoke to to get their opinions, and I might even show them to you so you perhaps go in that direction if you want to get something commission painted. It's not always about painting a whole army up. You don't turn around necessarily 3,000 points and say, hey, can you paint all this for me? But maybe you go, hey, I really like what you did with, you know, this Blood Angels character. Can you make one of that Blood Angels character for me as a special centerpiece to my army? They'll probably do it. A lot of guys out there are happy to do it. And like I said, just remember, be fair on the poor commission artists. If they're any good at what they do, they deserve to be paid appropriately for it. But don't turn around and expect more of them than they agree to. I'm Mac with the Outer Circle. Thank you all for watching this episode, and I'll see you all next time.